Since the last video I posted, I've had several questions about uh, not just putting the uh, spinnerbait together, but how do I actually pour the head? So today we're going to uh, pour the head on a, um, we're going to do a half ounce spinnerbait. I'm going to show you a few tips that I've learned over the years, how I've modified my mold uh, to, uh, to, to make it work for me. What I've got uh, as a setup, I have a, um, a hot pot uh, melting pot, um, just a simple, uh, it'll be a manual pour melting pot. I have a do it mold that has an eighth, a quarter, uh, three eighths and a half ounce uh, heads. If you'll notice though, uh, and I'm not sure if you can see it, I've, I've taken a small drill bit and I've drilled holes in the uh, in the mold so that I can make eyes uh, and put eyes on uh, on the spinnerbait to make it a little more realistic. And then I've even taken a smaller drill bit, drill bit and I've drilled out um, down in the um, the bottom of the head where the skirt slides uh, from the hook where the skirt slides on so that the skirt will stay on a little bit better and again I'm not sure if you can see those uh, but that's just the way I've modified uh, my mold a little bit the um, the melting pot I have is a very small manual melting pot um, you'll see that um, the consistency of the the lead that I have um, that I have here today it's probably been melting maybe um, 15 minutes or so. Uh, extremely hot, so be very, very careful as, as you do that. If you'll notice what I've, what I've done is I've taken uh, my, my do-it mold and i put it right up against the melting pot. What that does is it takes the, um, it will take the, the, the metal on the mold and it's actually going to, uh, to warm it up so that the uh, lead doesn't cool down uh, too quick on the uh, when, when it hits the mold. If it's going to cool down too quick it will not pour um, a complete head. So what I'm going to do is um, before I even start, before I even put any wire or anything in the mold, I'm going to close the mold and I'm actually just going to pour a few blank heads. I'm just going to take the the lid, pour it over in, and you normally will uh, will get a little bit on the top, open the mold up. I'll just take this lid out set it over to the side. The only reason I'm doing this is to warm my mold up. Again, if you do not warm your mold up, all you're going to do is uh, you're going to pour and you're going to get incomplete heads. It's going to cool down way too quick, but as you see, that's just a, uh, that, that's a complete head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour one more test, um, test head and make sure my mold is warm enough, and I'm going to try to make a partial head here and show you but my mold is plenty warm so I even with pouring very little lead in I had a, uh, a complete head then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 4 alt O'Shaughnessy hook. I've already bent my wire um, so what I'm going to do is take the, uh, the U-bend, put it inside the hook, lay it in the mold, close the mold down. I like to make sure the wire is straight in the mold. I'll even hold it with my other hand, take the pot Turn it over, pour it, and it's as simple as that, guys. It's um, there. You have uh, be very, very careful. Again, it's very, very hot. Uh, it will stay hot for a couple minutes. And matter of fact, the more you pour, the the, the warmer the mold will get. So you got to be very careful touching the mold as well. I'm going to pour a couple more, kind of show you how 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 I do it again. Again, take your hook, you put it on the U-band of the wire that I've bent. Again, this is um, 0.038 wire. I'm sorry, 0.030 wire. The ones you get in the store usually are 0.40. Take your pot, you just tip it over. Make sure that it's, if it poured, I usually grab a pair of needle nose and I'll pull that out. I'll, I'll inspect the head real quick, make sure. Again, I've already poured. Since we've been standing here, I've poured um, two heads, and I will pour one more just so that you can see. Again, take your .30 wire. You, you've been, I've bent that. I took about an eight-inch piece. I, I, I wrapped that. Look at that other video. It's, uh, it, it's, it's very self-explanatory. Take your U-band. You put it in there. Remember, get your uh, remember get your mold real nice and warm. Close it down. Clamp it down. Make sure it's straight, and then just. Uh, and then just pour the head. Very, very simple process. Again, you have to have a little bit of equipment, but, uh, but again, you see the eyes on my, uh, on my spinnerbait. You see the, um, the collar where I've made the collar on those spinnerbaits. And uh, now that you have three heads, I'm going to go over and I'm going to unplug my, my, my hot pot so that uh, th that can start cooling down before I, before I leave my workstation. What I'll do is I'll grab a, pair of, a small pair of side cutters. I'll take... Um, I'll take the first one I pour, and again, be very, very careful. 
and I'll go right beside the head and I will just snip off the excess um, lead. What you can do with that excess lead is I always take it and I just lay it back in my, my pot. It will melt back down and you're ready for the next time. Okay. Now, someone also asked, how do you paint these? It's a very simple process as well. What I've done is I've taken a, a piece of uh, small PVC, I've run a rope through it, I've cut uh, several holes on that, and I'll just put the, the, the um, point of the hook in that. I take a um, regular can of spray paint, this happened to be um, rust stop, it seems not to chip as bad, and I've just painted these, these white. And then I'll take a... Um, I'll take a can of blue spray paint, and then I'll just splatter those. I'll make sure it's going to spray real good, and then I'll just run it back and over several times, and you see that it, it covers it. If I want a yellow, I'm not a big chartreuse fan. I like to put chartreuse in my skirts, but I will not put it. So I've just taken this Cryline Indoor Outdoor. Again, it seems to stick a little bit better. Uh, it dries fairly quick. Make sure it's going to spray, and then I'll just spray um, the, the, the yellow on there. Um, and then you can even mix and match a little bit. Now take and splatter a little bit of uh, blue on that one. And uh, now you have a, a blue, uh, a blue green, even a chartreuse. Um, I'll take a little bit of red. I'll splatter a little bit of red on there. You can even go around to the other side and, uh, and, and spray the throat of the bait. And, um, and again, there's how you, uh, you paint a spinner bait. I'll take a um, just a regular sharpie marker. Uh, I'll put maybe yellow eyes on, on the spinner bait. Take a black marker, um, a, a silver marker, maybe make a line down it. Uh, put put some eyes on it. And um, and again, that's how you pour and uh, and paint spinner baits. Pretty simple process. Again, you need a uh, some kind of hot pot. You'll need some kind of mold. Um, a couple pair of needle nose pliers. Something to store your hot lid with. And uh, before you know it, you'll go from a, a plain hook, uh, a roll of wire, to a, uh, a custom-made spinnerbait that you uh, probably have uh, $4 in, and that includes all the parts. Um, and I'm looking at these. Uh, you can get these at your local tackle store. for. Uh, but over the years, they kind of pay for themselves, as you're going to pay $7, $8 for a quality spinnerbait, and I'll have uh, 4 or $5 in a uh, custom-made spinnerbait that I made in my, uh, in my basement on my own time.